Welcome to Field to Feast, where we profile Louisiana and its local ingredients. Today, we're at Red Stick Spice Company, and we're gonna kick it up a notch in their teaching kitchen using Louisiana beef and Red Stick Spices. Field to Feast with Jennifer Finley is brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board. Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat. And by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council. Beef, it's what's for dinner and by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board. Think Rice. We're here in the teaching kitchen at Red Stick Spice Company with Yvette Bonanno, and she is going to be making a fabulous dish using Louisiana beef. Tell me a little bit about this cut of beef. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited to show you this today because it's called hanger steak, okay. which was also referred to as the butcher's cut. Why? So once the butcher was completed his uh, butchering of the cow, this cut of meat, it's a little bit more challenging to butcher down. It hangs on the lower port of the um, cow and it is very tender. Okay. So there was really no way to market it. So the butcher would take it for himself. So, so it has. He had the inside skinny. Exactly. And now you've got the inside skinny. Wonderful. The other thing about this cut of meat, it's going to run you about six, seven dollars a pound. It has the tenderness of a filet mignon. Wow. And then just a lot of marbleization. It's got some fat to it. And I'm just excited to show it to you. So <laughs> what are the spices we're going to be using so today? So what I did find was they have a coffee barbecue rub. Sounds delicious. And it was great because when you're here, you can ask them to take the jar and then give you a taste. Okay. To see if it's to your liking. And so, of course, I'm tasting them all. And then the other spice I found was the steakhouse. It's a salt blend. So this had more heat to it, and this added the salt I needed to it. So, cast iron. Yes. Seasoned. Always. Yes. We're going to go oil first. Okay. Again, that's going to raise the temperature. And then the selection of oils here is amazing. Unbelievable. Um, to that, we're just going to add a little bit of uh, butter. It gives it a flavor. Okay. And then also, that, you know, provides that uh, golden, beautiful color once we get it on the sear. Oh, days Into like the today, pan. I love my job because I know <laughs> at the end of this, this is going here. I know, you know when people are like, oh, I wish you could smell on TV. Yeah. I, I wish you could smell this. You're only going to turn this once. So yeah, we talk about anytime we're searing proteins, we want to trap that moisture, the, juices. the flavors on the outside, but the juices are so very important. Yeah. So every time you're turning and flipping and mashing, those flavors and juices are being extracted. Yeah. So right now we're searing the bottom, they're rising up, we're gonna turn it on its side, and then we're gonna just only flip it once. Okay, look Correct. how see that is beautiful. It smells, I mean it really smells absolutely delicious. And so oh. the oh. other thing that I have to say, we were lucky enough to get is from Maggie Mushroom yes. at the Farmer's Market. One of my favorite people. I mean, adore her. Maggie and, and Cyrus are doing an amazing job out there. Talk to me about their mushrooms. Well, I mean, their selection, their variety is I mean, incredible. But when you go to the market, it, it's picturesque, yep. right? I mean, and they're just, they're lovely people where you're asking questions and what application for this mushroom and which one's hardier, which one, you know, is more delicate. So they gave me an assortment of oysters, chestnuts, the shiitakes, you know, mushrooms to me, an herb that is just so complimentary is fresh thyme, like, you okay. know, and so if we had time we could put in here, but there were so many spices in this blend that I think it's just going to, it's going to showcase well. All right. So we're going to remove our steak. Oh my word. And to the steak, here's what we're going to do, Jen. We're going to oh. add a little bit of butter to our meat. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yep. We That's can, okay. We can do this. It looks worth it. Yes. Oh my goodness. So what's going to happen is... I'll have a salad tomorrow. <laughs> we're going to tin it with foil. It's going to melt and create more, not only of the pan juices, but more juices because that butter is just going to oh, melt right into seeping it. Seeping inside. And the actual meat, the how tender it looks, it looks like butter. You yeah, know, it really it just, does. Oh my goodness. So deglaze with a little red wine. I've got some Pinot Noir. If you don't drink your wine and you're yes. not gonna drink it for the next couple of days, I put a, a cover on it, cork it, put it in the refrigerator, use it for cooking. Okay. So I know you never want it to go to waste, so. Right. I'll try and save some for the cooking. I know. <laughs> 
So we're going to deglaze again, just getting all those particles from the bottom of the pan. Yep. Once it reduces, I've got a little bit of beef broth. I think I do like it when it's more of a demi-gloss. Right, so it's just going to be a little bit of beef stock. And we're just going to let these simmer for just another minute. And it then uh, so I'm beautiful. just going to finish off with some Italian flat leaf parsley. And when we come back, Ann Milnick's going to join us here in the teaching kitchen at Red Stick Spice Company to make a delicious side using these wonderful spices. Time to add the parsley? Let's do it. So we're back here in the teaching kitchen at Red Stick Spice Company, and we're so excited to be with Ann Milnick. She's going to make us a side dish for that wonderful hanger steak. But first, I'd really like to talk about your gourmet grocery store. Tell me a little bit about Red Stick Spice Company. For sure. Uh, first of all, we have a blast every day that we come in. I'm a, I'm a gourmet grocery store, and when you walk in, you're going to be hit with um, all the smells. Now, we have smell amnesia. We don't smell anymore, but it's cumin and cinnamon and all these wonderful spices when you walk in. We also have olive oils and hand blended teas and lots of local artisanal products. Um, and then adjacent to the little grocery store where you can taste anything, you can smell anything, um, you walk into our teaching kitchen, which is where we are now. We are pretty darn proud of, proud of it. We yes, opened, you should be. This is gorgeous. Yeah, we opened just a few months ago and we couldn't be more tickled with ourselves with what we are able to accomplish in this room, yes. bringing folks in to do cooking classes, but we're also doing videos and Zoom classes. And yeah, so we're having a blast. I love it. So what are yeah. we gonna be making? So when I heard about hanger steak with the coffee barbecue rub, and I started thinking about those smoky elements and that richness, that umami that comes naturally from a piece of red meat. And then she's got some mushrooms going in there. I wanted to have some uh, yang to her yin. Um, so it. I wanted to make sure I brought in something sweet that would complement. Okay. And what's more perfect at this time of the year in Louisiana than Louisiana sweet potatoes. Nothing. So I grabbed Louisiana sweet potatoes and I'm going to apply smoke okay. and sweetness okay. to them. And they're already naturally sweet. It's going to work perfectly with what Yvette did with by using the coffee barbecue rub on the hanger steak. So I've got a sweet potato diced up, nice bite-sized cubes. I've got this in my bowl, and I'm gonna add um, half of a sliced onion. And I wanna, I'm gonna go in a cast iron, and it's gonna be incredibly hot. So I wanna think about the size of the food and what would happen if I had like a finely minced piece of garlic in there. It's just gonna burn too right. quickly. Right. So I wanna go a little bit larger, and I wanna not finely chop my onions. I want to, them to be in larger pieces, but they're gonna caramelize and break down and commingle with those sweet potatoes. So I'm just gonna give those Technique, technique, technique. But at the same time, even though it's a lot of technique, it's not intimidating. No, this is this not is something so you cannot do at simple. home. Yes. This is so simple. This is probably the same roasted sweet potatoes most folks are doing. Um, it's just thinking about it a little differently, working with the flavors that are naturally there, the sugars that are naturally there, and working with them a little differently. So I'm just gonna toss those around. And what I've done is I've got a cast iron in the oven and I've preheated it, preheated it and it is blazing hot. Okay. So I've got my onions and sweet potatoes and I'm going in with smoked, extra virgin olive oil. Love it. So, I love your, your yeah. oil selection is just divine. So smoked extra virgin olive oil goes on. Sweet smoked paprika. Okay. So I'm going in with just a sea salt. I'm going to grab this preheated cast iron and I'm going to cast iron. The only way to go in Louisiana. Yep. Yep. Feels like it. And so here it goes. And that is the magic sound yes. right there. So we want that to happen and that's going to go back into the oven. No lid, okay. um, we're gonna let our nose sort of guide us, but probably within the next 12 to 15 minutes, we're gonna see some softening on the sweet potatoes. We need to pull them out, give them a stir, make sure we really evenly get that caramelization on all sides. And thank you so much for having this us so much fun. here today in your teaching kitchen. I cannot wait to continue to come back and learn more and more and more. This was a ball, thank you. If you'd like more information about Field to Feast, about the recipes you've seen on our show, please visit us at twilighttv.org. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.
Field to Feast with Jennifer Finley was brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board. Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat. And by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council, beef, it's what's for dinner. And by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board, think rice.